during the second golden age of piracy. And on these waters, you will stake your claim. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and in this installment of Versus, we're pitting Ubisoft's best pirate games against each other. Assassin's Creed 4 and Skull and Bones. I can pilot her myself, no mind. You don't mean to abscond with my ship, do you? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Round 1. Historical Accuracy I did a decent trick at the helm some time ago. Two years before the mast as a privateer. Dash my buttons. Your life seems a grand one, if I may say. So full of adventure. How marvelous. It can be tricky to talk about Assassin's Creed and historical accuracy. But generally, a high level of historical accuracy is always seen in the franchise. When Ubisoft gets things wrong, more often than not, this is on purpose to ensure that they can tell the story they want to tell against an authentic backdrop. Learning about history is one of the key appeals of the series after all, and Black Flag is no different, as Kenway tours the Caribbean in the company of history's most notorious pirates. You, Mary Reed and Anne Bonny, are to go from hence to the place from whence you came, and from thence to the place of execution, where you shall be severally hanged by the neck. He meets Anne Bonny, Mary Reed, Blackbeard, Charles Vane, Ben Hornigold, Bartholomew Roberts, and more, all active during the Golden Age of Piracy. Some liberties with the truth are taken. For instance, Reed did famously dress as a man along with Bonny, but never claimed to be Captain Kidd's long-lost son. But overall, it's very close. I'll be with you, can't we? Oh well. Skull and Bones, on the other hand, is really only considering the vibes of the history it represents. This is a game that isn't even brave enough to be set in a real year and takes place vaguely in the late 17th century. What's a pirate's life without a little peril and mischief, eh? And while France and the Netherlands are, of course, real places, the indigenous communities in the East Indies are not. The Ungwana, the Clan of the Pharaoh, and Rempa, none of these societies are real cultures. Considering it wouldn't be that tricky to do the research into how Europe pillaged the East Indies for all they were worth, and similar levels of research have been hallmarks of Assassin's Creed the entire time it's existed, this decision is baffling. Some fans were also dismayed to learn that, beyond the tutorial, the British don't appear despite the British East India Company already having established settlements by the mid-17th century. Considering Skull and Bones doesn't seem to care about being historically accurate at all, despite being in a very real and fascinating historical setting, this is an easy victory for Black Flag. Winner, Assassin's Creed 4. We're outnumbered, mate! It's not the first time, can we? And it won't be the last! Take no quarter, lads! Neither. Round 2, Customization Here for a restyle, mon coeur? I can tell from a glance you're not a normal pirate. Come, Florentine D'Alesso will turn your life around with fashion to fit your rising fame. One of the main things that makes Skull and Bones worthwhile is the extensive customization. You can customize your pirate captain and, to an even greater extent, your ship. There are basic options like the color schemes of the sails and ship body, as well as your pirate emblem. But you can also add myriad decorations, figureheads, pets, and even add unique fireworks. The downside to this is that there are microtransactions, locking the best cosmetics away behind Ubisoft's latest premium currency, in this case, gold. You'll still unlock plenty of vibrant customization options through missions, and with the regular silver currency, but Ubisoft wouldn't be Ubisoft without charging you additional money on top of the eye-watering $70 price tag. My hands can make anything you need for your ship, Captain. Black Flag is a very different type of game, with a fixed, full-written, and fully-voiced protagonist who has his own journey to go on, a journey you, the player, have no real way to influence. That makes for a much better game and a more compelling story in this case, but it does limit what you can customize. You can't rename Edward's ship, the Jackdaw, for example, and the sail and color options are limited. I've made my choice, Addy. 
and calling her the Jackdaw. He does have a lot of outfits to craft and unlock too, but nothing on the level of Skull and Bones. Finally, you can't really edit Edward or the Jackdaw's loadouts. They have the weapons they'll always have, and you'll slowly upgrade to having more of those weapons or better versions. But they're still, fundamentally, the same. There's no room for different combat strategies or techniques. Since customization is one of the few things Skull and Bones gets right, we're going to give it a victory here. Decking out your frigate is a lot of fun. Winner, Skull and Bones. Come back when you have more coin to spare. Round 3, Swashbuckling. Assassin's Creed will always be a third-person action series, and the addition of naval combat with Assassin's Creed 3 only supplemented that. But even in the most navy-heavy game in the series, you'll still spend just as much time on land as you do at sea. Edward has viewpoints to synchronize, targets to assassinate, animals to hunt, and treasure maps to follow, all backed up by very fun swordplay, platforming, and robust stealth mechanics. This completes the pirate fantasy, since you're not just tied to a ship. You're exploring these untouched tropical islands and experiencing both their beauty and hostility. As gentlemen of fortune, we enjoy plenty and satisfaction, pleasure and ease, liberty and power. What man with a sensible mind would choose the former life? The pedigree of Assassin's Creed made Skull and Bones' lack of meaningful third-person gameplay all the more disappointing. This is a game that has spent a decade in development, building on one of Ubisoft's most popular and critically acclaimed titles ever, and it removed a key element both of the series that made it and the pirate genre. There is no way to sword fight anybody. A lot of the cosmetics for your character don't even have weapons, even if they're purely decorative. It does have treasure hunting, but the maps give away the outposts they're buried at. A pop-up will always tell you if you're in the right place, and the ground will start glowing to indicate the treasure before you get to do any real puzzling. You can't board enemy ships outside of a cutscene. Most of the landmasses you're not able to explore at all, and you can't battle fellow pirates with swords and pistols. There isn't even a run button. Hey, better watch your mouth in there. This is an extremely easy win for Black Flag, since Skull and Bones appears to have simply removed huge portions of what made that game so iconic, and replaced them with nothing. Winner, Assassin's Creed 4. <laughs> Round 4, Naval Combat. It was Ubisoft Singapore that developed the naval combat for Assassin's Creed 3, the first game to feature it as a key element. The system was then perfected in Black Flag and Rogue, and the idea to translate it into an open-world multiplayer experience was born. As such, the naval combat is something that really shines in Skull and Bones. It has to, because that's basically all there is to do. Ships are faster and more mobile in Skull and Bones. You have more options for how to equip and upgrade your ship, and sinking enemy fleets is always satisfying. It's just a better, more streamlined version of the combat we came to know and love in Assassin's Creed. The bosses are much more tedious than in Black Flag though. They're easier by a mile, but if you're playing solo, they've got so much health that the fights get long and boring. Ah! When Black Flag released, its naval combat was mind-blowing, and arguably the best real-time naval combat we've ever had in a video game. It's still a blast to go back and play today, and naval combat continues to reappear in Assassin's Creed. As recently as Odyssey, sailing, exploration, and combat were a key focus, as you ventured across the Greek archipelago sinking the Spartan and Athenian navies. The faster naval combat in Odyssey feels nearer to Skull and Bones than Black Flag does though. Whether you want it to be faster or slower and more accurate is up to you, and maybe you'll prefer the less arcadey feel of those older games. Shout I! Hey! 
Those who oppose, whimper nay. Ultimately, Skull and Bones does iterate and improve the naval combat from Assassin's Creed, so we're giving it another point for just slightly edging out its predecessor. Winner, Skull and Bones. Soon they'll be swimming with the fish! Round 5, Story. I could really use a new captain now. Heard you swap that leaky tub of yours. Talk of your deeds grows louder. Perhaps this category is a little unfair since Skull and Bones doesn't actually have a story to speak of. But that's the main problem, because from a game this long in development that promises to be a worthy successor to the narrative-heavy Assassin's Creed series, this is phenomenally disappointing. We already knew ahead of release that the campaign had been almost entirely removed, with only a very loose narrative revolving around becoming Skurlock's most trusted underling and then leaving to help the Rempa free the East Indies from Dutch control. This is basically it, with repetitive missions and boring cutscenes all building it up to a small number of underwhelming boss battles. It is undoubtedly a huge disappointment. The Helm plotline adds another layer, but it's still no match for a true campaign. Hey, don't look at me. You're the best pirate to win Skurlock over. Me? Ah, yeah. I had my shot in the past. Black Flag, meanwhile, has one of the best stories in Assassin's Creed. Edward has an entire character arc and journey to go on, as he learns to abandon his pursuit of wealth and glory in favor of the Assassin Brotherhood, joining them and raiding the Caribbean of the Templars oppressing it. There's not a man or woman that I love left standing beside me. There is time to make amends, Captain. Along the way, he also gets caught up in the hunt for the Observatory and the Crystal Skull, which can be used to spy on anybody in the world using only a drop of their blood. This massive power can't fall into Templar hands, and it's down to Edward to stop them. The story is emotive, well-written, and memorable, with all those infamous pirates coming to life in a way we've rarely seen. Have you found the peace you seek? I'm not aiming so high as that. For what's peace but a confusion between two wars? Oh, oh, you're a stoic then. It's no contest here. Black Flag actually has a story, and a good one, while Skull and Bones, despite being touted as a quadruple A release, stripped itself bare. Winner, Assassin's Creed 4. Aye, like that. Fair enough. Somewhat unsurprisingly, Black Flag has sailed to victory, leaving Skull and Bones to flounder and sink to the bottom of the Great Blue Sea. We can't escape! We're gonna die! Go on, Cowboys Lord! You failed us! Let us know in the comments what you think of Skull and Bones and whether there's any saving this ill fated game. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips for Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.